thank you everybody for coming on this warm, uh, kind of wintry evening. It was pissing down earlier, but it has dried up. So thank you very much for venturing out and being here with us this evening. We've got a lovely lineup for the last show of the year. We're going monthly now. So we've had September, October, November, and here we are in December, the final one of the year. And we're very delighted that you're here. And tonight we have a very special spotlight guest. She's a young anthropologist, explorer, filmmaker, documentary maker and we are delighted that she is here tonight as my spotlight guest. That'll be Sarah Begum coming up very shortly. Ooh. And because it's Christmas, we're going to have a little extra treat of a trick from our magic man, David Harris. So he'll be doing a little trick on Sarah at the end of the spotlight show. And I'm sure that you'll be dying to ask some questions of Sarah's adventures. So we'll put the opportunity for the audience to participate at the end of that. And we'd just like to make a special mention to Rocky Nine Productions, who are here doing behind the scenes. A little spotlight. Rocky. Little spotlights with guests uh, throughout the rest of the evening. And we have Soprano Digital Media here doing our live stream to you people at home that couldn't make it here and wanted to stay all cozy. Thank you very much. And we are supporting the charity Headway, the Brain Injury Association. There's some little gifts on the table as it's Christmas, but please do chat to Andrea, um, who is in charge of the charity. And thank you very much to Lena, Elena, who's a big supporter of Headway, and she's been a great support for me tonight. So, <laughs> thank you very much. Without further ado, I've got some far more interesting than me for us to speak to with. So I'd like to now invite to the stage Sarah Begum! Come on, guys! So welcome! Thank you for having me. Uh, well, obviously, Sarah is gorgeous, small, and uh, <laughs> you wouldn't think that you're an explorer. You're not the sort of typical kind of person that people would expect when you mean, maybe if you were in car keys, I get this a lot, but I'd like to know, what's your perception of a typical explorer? Well, that's the thing. You have this idea, you've watched Indiana Jones, for example. I am Indiana the Jones. <laughs> 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 so, I mean, you are only tw uh, 29 now, but at 21, we're going to get straight in there. You went mm. straight in there deep to the Amazon. I, I mean, for a 21-year-old to think, I'm going to go to the Amazon and make a film about it, is a pretty big task. So what gave you the idea of doing it in the first place? And what did you initially have to get together to be able to, to, to get everything together to survive the jungle? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so initially what happened was, at the <coughs> age of nine, I learned about deforestation in the Amazon, mm. and it became my dream to go there. I, I just wanted to save the trees and see how this tribe live deep in the jungle in this primitive sense um, of survival. Uh, growing up, I had visions of tribes people calling me. Um, Were these in your dreams? Yeah, I had like flashes and odd dreams here and there, and they were like mess, like synergies, you know. Mm. Funny that. Funny enough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I just. Like, I had this strong connection to nature, to... Uh, Did you grow up in the nature? Did you grow up in the countryside? No, I didn't. I grew up in the city, but I kept yearning for nature. Mm. I kept yearning for lush greenery. So whenever I'd go out to the country or travel... You like um, to hug a tree? <laughs> sometimes, yeah. <laughs> so I when did you have to start getting together guilty. to do this journey? Because okay, you, you need so more than just a backpack. Okay, so um, at 21, I was studying uh, television um, and film, and I felt that I didn't get much from my course, and I wanted to do more with my life. So I decided to make my first film. So I quit my job. I used a month out from my final year to make my very first film. Um, I won an award for it as well. Amazon so, Souls? Uh, yes, my film, Amazon Souls. So I, w I won an award. It was one of ten people, the only woman and the only creative on the award. Um, and used like all my savings to make the film. Hired a cinematographer from New York, Sandman from Portsmouth. Um, and How then did you find these people? So I did some research and I um, found the people and then I got access through um, this fixer, this contact that I had. 
And so he set everything up for me. Um, and yeah, I just, mm. when I found the tribe, when I was choosing the tribe, I was mm. thinking to explore a different part of the Amazon beyond Brazil because the largest part of the Amazon is obviously in Brazil, but I wanted to explore Ecuador because in Ecuador you have the Andes, you have the Galapagos, you have the Amazon. And I just felt that it was such a unique part of the world and I wanted to see the Amazon. But what really excited me and engaged me to this um, part of the Amazon was the Warani tribe. So I how did you find this Warani tribe? Research. It was through research. So I found the tribe and what fascinated me about them was how they lived. So they live completely naked, um, hunt in the jungle. Um, obviously, since um, contact with the West over time, they have adopted um, wearing clothes. Those who go to the city can now speak Spanish. S some speak few words of English. Um, study in the universities. You know that mod modernization has hit the culture. So was this the main bulk of your documentary for the Amazon? Well, that I was hunting with warriors. Um, I was gathering with the women, and then. Um, they got me naked, made me queen, and married me to a warrior during my initiation ceremony. Wow. <laughs> Does that stand, like, forever? Are you married forever? I'm an Amazon warrior <laughs> queen, yeah. yeah. That's a pretty good accolade, definitely. <laughs> so, I mean, when you were with this tribe, what was the most interesting thing that you discovered about their culture and the way they live? They're just so beautiful. Oh, my gosh. It's, it's just life so simple, so pristine. It's... It's this life of survival. There is no currency there. There is no politics. How many people in the tribe? Um, uh, when I was there at the time, there was about 30 people in the tribe. Um, the village that, that I went to, I went to Bamino village, but they have several villages, obviously, all over the Amazon. Um, and what was fascinating and distinct about this tribe was that they were uh, related to the Tagheri. Now, the Tagheri tribe are the uncontacted. So um, in the 1950s, the first five missionaries to make contact with this tribe were speared to death. And the Tagheri, they, they don't want to have any contact with the outside world, any contact with Westerners or even locals. They want to literally just live in the jungle, isolated from the rest of the world and preserve their way of life. So how did you get across that threshold of it being able to be invited in? So they were fascinated. Like I said, it was the relationship that I had with the fixer who had access to them and had a great relationship with the tribe. But um, what was interesting was they were interested in me because they'd never seen someone so young of a different culture going to explore theirs. Um, and it was, it was interesting. And also they kept telling me that I looked like one of their... Uh, like I looked like them, like one of the Warani girls who one of the warriors wanted to marry like years ago and then something happened and you know I kind of blended in mm. um, so I was thinking well I watched Avatar a week before my <laughs> <laughs> that's great <laughs> I was like this is cool no um, no they they were fascinated in me as much as I was fascinated in them and how long did you actually spend there with them I was there for a month oh wow so how they hunt what they use to make their uh, darts, the blow, uh, blow guns, the spears, the poison, that fascinated me. Um, and I got to, I managed to get uh, permission to go on one of the hunting trips. Which I guess is normally for, it's for the men. guys. Yes. Yeah, I, I, because I'm a little bit of a, you know, I'm very much of a tomboy. Um, <laughs> and I like, I, I, I'm, I was always fascinated by hunting and, I'm quite active, I like sports and martial arts, and I'm, I'm just interested in all of that. I used to always play with the boys, as a kid. <laughs> Hopefully that doesn't sound too right. <laughs> Hang out with the boys. Hang, hang out, out with, with the boys. boys. There we go. <laughs> um, so I wanted to hang out with the guys in the tribe, and I was like, right guys, I want to know what the men's role in this tribe is, and I want to join you, and I'm dying to go on a hunting trip. So I, I guess your confidence was like, well, this girl's up for it then. If she's up for it, let's do it. I mean, I was willing to do anything to help them and to learn about their way of life. So I literally immersed myself. I just, I went all the way in and I, and I was helping them wh wherever they needed um, anything done. Whatever they were doing, I was learning. I was shadowing them. I was learning from them and I was becoming one of them in the process, I guess. 
Was uh, there any point that you were like, oh, I don't feel comfortable? I mean, obviously, getting naked. Well, I had to get naked. <laughs> Just like, already no one's going to watch this. <laughs> but they're it's already like, naked, so yeah, I guess you so, feel like okay. you're not doing anything a bit weird. What was interesting for me about that bit was uh, <laughs> holding on to my Western barriers. I was, you know, I was mm. obviously worried and concerned and uh, shy and so many things were going through my head, but to them... It was normal. It was natural. And they can understand why it was such a big deal for me, why I was going through so many levels of emotions and, and uh, why I, I was resisting. But when I finally thought about it, I was thinking, right, you know, it was when um, the lady took off her top and then she was like, Sarah, look, it's, it's fine, it's normal. And then she took off the little girl's top and we were making chicha, it's the beverage we um, made for the ceremony that night. And I was, I literally, I took everything off except I was holding onto a piece of cloth. It was just like this. Were like, you actually completely naked? Y yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> but um, she, w when she did that, like all the women, they, they gathered around me and they were like, look, this is normal. It's fine. It's so our it's, culture. They were all naked as well. So, so then that's when I let go. And as soon as I let go, the um, the leader of the tribe started chanting. And as soon as he ch started chanting, and they were making a crown out of macaw feathers. And, and I remember helping them like um, make the chicha. The chicha's the beverage, so it's like peach palms. So we were crushing peach palms to um, ferment them and then turn that into alcohol. Um, so they were quite happy quite a lot. <laughs> I mean, they are happy. They're happy if they're able to survive if they are able to go out on a hunt catch food for the I mean, family if they couldn't find something to hunt were they having to manage on I mean, they, a lot to eat they'd have to manage exactly or they would have to go to another um uh, family within the community and share the food so there was a sense of sharing but because survival can be quite tough can be very physically challenging i mean these guys don't even wear shoes I remember um, a few days in, I, 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 I had lost my favourite sandals in the quicksand. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I couldn't wear them. I remember going barefoot and just like... Well, that's scary just let go the quicksand though as well. I mean, obviously my shoes, my shoes. I was in the quicksand. About... I was just like saying, my new sandals! Oh, were no. you worried about going in the quicksand though, like in the films? <laughs> I wanted to see... Um, Experience it. Experience it, but then I, I, I was like, okay, um, what if I don't come back? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's not a good look. Not a no. You went into the Amazon, but you didn't come out. Yeah. <laughs> the Amazon ate me alive. But you yeah. can see the film called Amazing Souls. Where um, is Amazon Souls. Amazon Souls. Well, it's amazing but they are Amazon Amazing Souls. Souls. Amazing Souls. Uh, Amazon Souls. And where can they see this film? Okay, so this film's available on iTunes and Amazon um, and Wildlife Conservation Channel online. Great. And, and in terms of wildlife conservation, you're a fellow of the National Geographic Society. Yeah. I guess that's another accolade for someone quite Royal young. Geographic. The Royal Geographic. That's though. okay. <laughs> <laughs> the Royal, you've got to get the Royal in there, definitely. It's just the Royal Geographic Society. <laughs> And so you must be quite young to be a member with them as well. I was um, made a fellow by um, a long-standing member and then seconded by another one um, in the States. And they really believed in the work that I was doing to promote the message of the people in the Amazon. Because I went there initially to investigate the impacts of exploitation of their land from deforestation and all exploitation. And I did, I did investigate, found some... Really sad, um, sad information. I mean, parts of the Amazon, that part of the Amazon, the Yasuni National Park, is being sold off to oil companies around the world. Um, in 2014, no, so 2012, the president wanted to raise $3.2 billion to keep um, a specific block in the ground. Um, but failing that, because they raised only $13 million, he um, let go of the initiative, he just abandoned it. Oh. And so, I mean, that part of the world is under threat. And I was, you know, I was um, organizing <coughs> petitions, I wrote to the president, he did respond, he recognized my efforts, and the tribe have decided to negotiate with the government. They've been using me as a mediator. 
Um, and I, you know, I presented their proposal to the government to try to keep parts of their home um, uh, protected, whereas they're able to uh, sell other parts of the Amazon to generate income for the country, because that is their main cash cow, mm. the oil. So you talk about exploitation there, and it's not just yeah. exploitation in the jungle, um, but you've actually had the opportunity of interviewing uh, a prostitute in Amsterdam. I mean, obviously there is exploitation <laughs> that goes on there of a different kind, uh, and to be sort of in that world and go almost undercover and find out the sort of how it is for a, a woman to be in that uh, profession. How did you approach that and, um, and why did you decide to sort of go in deep there? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the why is an interesting question. Um, I had an ex-boyfriend who told me about some of his experiences and I wanted to find out more. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> That's a good reason is any. <laughs> No, um, so I was, I was actually there for the IDFA, which is the International Documentary Film Festival in Amsterdam. And whilst I was there, I was fascinated to uh, explore the red light district and find out more about it and why a woman would choose that profession. Cause I couldn't understand it. When I can't understand something, I like to investigate and explore. So then I do understand it instead of just coming to um, judgments you know so um, I <laughs> I took my favorite teddy bear I cut it open I stuck a tiny camera in there and I put it in my handbag I, I wore a really sexy dress with a hooded cape and I went down the red light district one evening and so I did you have the teddy bear like poking out the top yeah. of the cat in your bag so I looked like a little crazy chick <laughs> <laughs> um, and I was knocking on all the doors. I was hoping to find a beautiful woman. Uh, one of them, one or two of them, let me take pictures, but they wouldn't let me in because their pimp would wouldn't allow it. So then I came across this one woman. Her name was Layla, and it's just like the Eric Clapton song. You know that <laughs> song reminds me of her. Um, she was so beautiful, like absolutely stunning, and. I remember um, she opened the door and she was just like, oh, she's so young. So wh why do you want to know more? She was like, I was just like, oh, you're so beautiful and this is so pretty and I've never been here. It's my first time in Amsterdam and I've always wanted to know about the red light district. And she's like, do you want to get into this business? And, and I thought, hey, that's a great <laughs> Great get in. And she's like, yeah. Yeah, I, I do. Can you be my mentor? Yeah, that's, that's what I said. I said. Can you teach me? <laughs> so she let me in and um, she was like, okay, so what do you want to ask? You know, I didn't have time to check if my teddy and the camera was on. I was hoping that it was recording. Um, I sat down and we started talking about her dreams. And I said to her, well, Layla, don't you have dreams? Didn't you have dreams of doing something else, being somebody else? I'm sure they must do. They must she, do. She said, the way she replied to me, it was the way she replied. She, she just looked down um, and then out the window and she just said, those dreams died a long time ago. Oh, I could tell she was a broken soul. Um, and she was engaged and her fiancé knew what she was doing and she didn't let them... Um, through the traditional route, so <laughs> um, yeah, she had a she had a specific way of dealing with her clients. I remember that her saved own, herself for her for her, her fiance. fiance. I don't know how that worked, but she she, <laughs> she just did it for money. She for her it was just a money making game. Wow! And uh, she was also an escort. She was making thousands, and yeah, she, she it just I felt that was her escapism. That mm. was her. Um, go to for for acceptance of herself. and where did you take all this information and data and did the TV did the the filming come out in the teddy the teddy ate it <laughs> the, <laughs> the teddy ate it the teddy ate the film oh so it didn't come out so on what the film. happened was um, the camera battery died whilst I was in the interview ah. and it was raining that night and I was planning to go see the pimp afterwards she said she would give me his number and the address where to go to. As soon as I walked out, it was pouring down, and I just, I just had to make it, make way back to the Idfa, the festival.
so I didn't have time to follow up on that. But that was fascinating. Um, yeah, I had the footage um, and I showed it to some people and I was just, I did care about um, her, her sensitivity of her information and her face and everything, so I decided not to release that. So you haven't actually ever published anything to do with that particular Not incident? That particular, no, because I, I mm. yeah. So our little story there was a little exclusive of your experience. Yeah, I've never spoken about this. So. Oh, well, there you go. You heard it here <laughs> first, folks. <laughs> <laughs> so your adventures haven't stopped. I mean, uh, you've gone across the world and your next stop that you're looking to explore is Ghana. Actually, I just got back from Ghana. I was there for about a year, um, about 10 months in total. And that was interesting. So I was presenting for a channel out there. I was um, found by a media mo uh, mogul who owns this channel. He wanted me to be the international face um, for his channel. I was uh, an investigative journalist presenting documentaries, special features for the news. I was on um, sports shows discussing tele uh, football and boxing and, and the lot. I was doing boxing, I was training in boxing out there because I do martial arts. Um, and yeah, it was, it was fascinating. It was, it was great. I did, lots of, I did lots of stuff for them and I got back about a month or so. Where are we? December. <laughs> I got back <laughs> over a month ago. I guess when you're travelling yeah. around, you get a bit discombobulated yeah. about where I are, what time zone it is, <laughs> who I should be speaking with. But your documentary that you're going to be doing with Russ Malkin. Yes. Yeah, so we're, oh yes. Okay. So after working for this channel, um, I teamed up with Russ Malkin. He's a he's the director of Bigger. So he's directed David Beckham for The Love of the Game, Ewan McGregor, Charlie Borman, Long Way Round, Long Way Down. Famous documentary. Um, Prince Harry in Africa. He's amazing. So he and I have been friends for a while. We set up the Adventurous Club for female explorers. It's now a, a Facebook online platform. And how many women are in that uh, organization? Over a thousand at the moment. So last time I checked, it was about 1,400. But um, it's growing every day. Well, women are getting out there more and wanting to do their own thing. and Yeah, I mean, it's to inspire other women to go and have their own adventures. It's to inspire people um, from adventurous souls, you know, stories of adventurous souls, sharing their experiences, sharing their knowledge, their skills, their passions, their achievements, and being inspired by that to go off and do your own adventure. You know, live life. There's a, such a big world out there. It's so beautiful, so diverse, so many cultures. And I love learning about them all. And it's great to want to learn about each other, you know? So if there's anywhere, uh, you're obviously concentrating on the, the Ghana documentary for next year, but <clears throat> of all the places in the world that you could possibly go to, is there any particular place that you would love to go to that's on, on the list to go to? Oh, there's so many. Um... I can't, I can't choose. There's What's the first one that comes to mind, if there's lots of them? Okay, I was thinking about this um, specific tribe in Russia, but I'd like to go um, horse riding through Russia to get to this particular tribe. You wouldn't think of tribes in Russia, because you think about tribes, you think of Africa, the Amazon. There are tribes all over the world. It's not limited to just one continent. There are tribes around. Are they the world. kind of a bit more Eskimo, Eskim, Eskimo type <laughs> tribe? Eskimo. <laughs> Is that a word? <laughs> Eskimo. Eskimo. Well, yeah, but, but you think of Russia. Well, you, you think have of Eskimo. cold. So you have. You have. Um, well, you have tribes in Greenland. Yeah. Um, you have the Inuits mm -hmm. as well. You yes. have um, the Mongolian tribes as well. You have. I guess you have the triad tribe, tribe, which is Chinese yeah. of sorts. Yeah, instead of tribe. Kind of but thing. I mean, I mean, tribe, tribe. The definition of the word can be um, explored and applied to so many different groups of people. I mean, this is a tribe of a sort, you know? Uh, and, and that yes, I do event, see so. you people as my tribe. Yeah. So. <laughs> and so. talking of my tribe, um, we'd like to throw it open to the audience uh, to ask some questions for Sarah. We have time for two questions. Has anybody got a question? Uh, yeah. Yes, Marco, what would you like to ask? Okay, um, 
I've done journalism in my country, so I've done the same job of you, but I'm featuring in some issue after I wrote in in, in newspaper what happened. For example, I follow the drug murdering oh, institution. Wow. What country it. is this? Italy. Italy. <laughs> wow. In, amazing country for this season. <laughs> Where in Italy? Uh, in North Italy. It's uh, close to the front, Genova, the north. Okay, area. no, I was in Sicily. Sicily, but I, my father was from Sicily, so I... The Godfather so, is my favorite film. Yes, but Godfather, <laughs> yeah, I know, but it comes from USA, so it's a little bit. Different. I know, but I love it but so we, good. We, anyway. There was a Godfather here in London as well. He's died uh, in the Italian community this year, so we lost the Godfather right. of London. <laughs> so, Marco, what is your question? My question is this one. Now, you analyze uh, the tribe uh, about Amazon, but uh, um, I want to know about the, the society that I built. For example, uh, there are just women in this group, uh, or there is some men? In, in, in this um, Amazon group that you were there are in men and women. Men and women, okay. Yeah, without without women, there is no balance in the world. Yeah, yeah, but this kind of tribe properly that we, you we be became a warrior. You do the naked uh, uh, okay. ritual. This kind of tri um, ritual. Okay, but there is just women in this group, or men and women in this tribe. Okay, so what happened? Yeah. I'll talk you through it. What? <laughs> I'll talk you through it. So I was invited to take my clothes off yeah. and then they made me queen and they were planning a ceremony for me um, that evening uh, <laughs> and I joined the, um, the, the elders. So it was their decision. So they decided to accept me into the tribe. And I'm sitting in a hammock, I was with the leader's wife. Um, and a warrior, I had no idea, like he was like the best hunter, best warrior in the tribe. Um, I had no idea why he was sitting next to me, I just thought it was like everyone sitting Gosh, everywhere. you don't know what they're saying, I, I didn't like know. sign language and thing is, I didn't know what was going, I didn't know what was <laughs> happening. Um, it's, they speak the tribal dialect, well to their all, um, spoken by just over 2,000 people in the world. Um, <clears throat> so obviously I didn't understand what was happening, what was going on, and I thought I was just like it was my queen ceremony, but they were marrying me to the warrior next to me. Okay. Uh, yeah. Male. Um, and yeah, male. Yes. <laughs> and there were, no, 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 there no. were men and women. Okay. Yes. They were el the elders. They were singing and they were chanting okay. around me. Okay. So it was all the men and women. Okay. And it was just the elders there. Um, there were like everyone was in the hut, the entire community, but the elders were part of the ritual. Okay. Um, and you can watch the film and find out more. There you go. Yeah, Thank you, Marco. Time for one more question. So, uh, Mandy, we go. Mandy's got a question. You said you travelled around a lot. If you had to retire anywhere, where would it be? If I had to retire, you had to retire somewhere. Where would you be? <laughs> where would you hang your boots up? <laughs> you know, I, I often do think about the Amazon, about going back there. Um, if I retire, I don't think I'd be in one place. I'd be traveling all over the world still. I, I keep traveling because it never stops. There are like. It's become an addiction. You know, there is, yeah. <laughs> I think it is. I, I do get the itch, yeah. the travel itch. If I, if I hadn't traveled for a while, I want to go off and explore again. It's something. Stepping into the unknown. Yeah, discovering, exploring new cultures, um, uh, people, d like doing some people. I, say? I, meant, I meant tribes. Because um, it's just one thing going out and exploring it for yeah. yourself, but you're actually doing it to help others know about to these raise tribes. awareness of um, the issues that they're facing as well, um, to raise awareness of other cultures, distinct, unique people in the world. I love that. I love learning about the world. I love learning about the people, the different, diverse groups of people on this planet. And every time we learn about someone else who's different from us, we expand our horizons and we develop respect for them mm. and for the planet. Well, I definitely think we need people like you to help us understand those tribes and cultures. Otherwise, we would know nothing about these people. And I think the more that we know about different cultures, understand each other, the more chance we have of some peace in the world. Exactly. It's yes. all about peace and unity. And that's the message on my last day um, that the tribe asked me to bring to the world. I asked them, I said, what's your message? What message would you like me to bring, take back to the West? And they said, we want you to bring everyone together. We want you to create unity. So 
And I've been on a mission doing that, like peace, love and unity, like in everything that I do, I try to bring people together in all examples of my life, my work, my being, my essence, like I try to create that. Well, that's a, a great way to be, a great cause and a mission to have. And we look forward to seeing your future documentaries, the Ghana one that will be coming up next year. And so I just want to give a big round of applause to Sarah Bagan. Thank you very much. And her website is Sarah Bagan. TV. TV. Sarah TV, <laughs> and you can see more of her there and keep an eye on what she's up to. And now we want to create some love in the room and some magic. I'd love you to introduce to the lovely Magic Man. Here we go. Get the important things done. Magic Man, London, there we go. So, Magic Man, it's so over to you. Over to me. Now, before we started, we've been doing a few checks, but I haven't got... He's amazing! Do <laughs> <laughs> a little warm-up session? Yeah, but we didn't organise anything. No. I didn't ask you to... In a minute, I'm not asking you to cut the pack. I didn't ask you to cut in a certain place. No. Perfect. <laughs> and I didn't ask you to think of a certain card. No, no. Not that you're aware of? No. No. Perfect. Uh, give those a quick shuffle for me. I, I don't know how to shuffle. Make sure they're all different, so you can look at them face up. It's alright, I've seen it before. <laughs> wow. <laughs> but make sure they're all, like, look at them face up. Okay. They are different, they're not all the same. Of course. They're all different. We, we do cheat occasionally. Perfect, and then put the pack down. Okay. Perfect, and then just cut the pack. Just cut the pack wherever you like. Cool, are you happy where you cut? Yes. Cool, have a look at the card that you cut to. Remember it and then put it back. And then put everything else on top. Perfect, that's fair. You cut the back wherever you want, you looked at the card, you put it back. Yeah. That's the fairest way you can choose a card, okay. to be honest. I can't, there's no way I could have influenced you on that. <laughs> if you think there is, you can cut again. No. No, because then you might be thinking, does he want me to cut again? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, instead, we're going to go like this. But this time, we're going to get you to choose a card from this pack. Okay. Uh, these are all different, by the way. Yes? Yeah. Here we go. Uh, so just put your finger on the card for me. Cool. Take it and put it face down. Don't look at it just yet. Wait. Just... Oh. <laughs> He's a mind reader as well, so be careful. Blank uh, the mind. Blank the mind. <laughs> Do you believe in coincidence? Yes, yeah, yeah. Yeah, a bit freaky. Kind of <laughs> you cut, you shuffled the pack and cut wherever you like, and you looked at the card. Yeah. What card did you look at? And what card did you just choose out that? Jack pack? of Diamonds. <laughs> <laughs> wow! How wow. did you do that? Really Check well. Sweet. Don't say wait and then not show them. Then show, 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 show them that card there. <laughs> no, 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 it's not that. No, it is. No, show them. Otherwise, they think it's all the same. I oh, know this. It's not this. One. No. It's in there. Oh, but this time we'll go one step further. Okay. We'll make it even more comfy. Here. Put that back. Okay. Oh, there. Okay. And just cut the pack. Uh, and if you want, you can cut it multiple times, so it's not just one card you're cutting to. Have it. Pick a number, one, two, or three. Three. Cool. Have a look at that card. Remember it and then put it back. I'll close my eyes. Close my eyes. Got it? Okay, there we go. Perfect, and then <laughs> shuffle it uh, and then shuffle it back into the pack. Oh look away. Can I put it in any number? You can put it anywhere. And then put the whole pack together. Perfect. Um, do you play poker at all? No. No. Would you say you had a good poker face? Were you good at lying? So bad at lying, it's alright, it makes my life that tiny bit easier. I can act. <laughs> you can act. Yeah, yeah. Try and act. Uh, all I want to do is think about your card. I want you to imagine it nice and bright on a big billboard. Okay. Yeah? The fact that you can do that with a slight nod of the head tells me it's a red card. Yeah, yeah. yeah and that, that smile kind of confirms it. Now, if it's a red card, it's going to be a heart or a diamond. That, that's, well, that's, not, that's obvious. That's obvious. We know, we know it's a heart or diamond. Uh, but your mouth drops a tiny bit on the diamond. Yes, perfect. Just think about the value. Think whether it's a high value or a low value. 
Ooh. <laughs> okay, we're going to go high. No, low. Um, just <laughs> then it was a mind reader. Just repeat the number again and again in your head, but not out loud. So if you're going to say it out loud, it would be like three of diamonds, three of diamonds, three of diamonds, yes? How <laughs> <laughs> did he do that? <laughs> and just wow. to show. Oh, how does he do that? Oh, no, it was over you put it back. That's because you put it back. You put it back. back. It's fine. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> well done. So yeah. there's a so round of applause for Daniel. Blows my mind. Check me out on Instagram and Twitter. I yes, will. the Magic yeah. Man. Um, Magic Man London, Magic on, London Twitter, on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Exactly. And uh, just before we go, we have one final little thing to reveal with a, uh, something of a bit of a preview for a guest next month. So um, there's been a new addition for people that go exploring, um, travel a lot. This could come in very handy. So I have here a little gift for you from Lamont, London, which if you'd like to open up your gift, this is a technology in a bag, which means that you can track your bag wherever you are. So if your bag gets stolen, it's got an integrated tracker in there. And, um, or it's like Christmas, just rip it off. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so on your travels around the world, you can be using this bag. Oh, and inside the bag is a playing card. So cool. <laughs> <laughs> now that would be a trick. That's the next time. So we'll have Lamont, we'll have Lamont um, here with us in February. We're taking time off in January because the first Wednesday of the month is the first of January. So we're all going to be pretty whacked out on that day. So we won't be here. But we'll be here on the 7th of February. So I'd just like to have a big round of applause for my guest Sarah Bagan. And the Magic Man London, David. A big thank you to Rocky Nine Productions for behind the scenes. And a very big welcome and thank you to Soprano Digital Media here for the first time doing the live stream. Woo! And one final thing to say, thank you to Lacry Couture for the dress that I'm wearing today. It is on loan and um, this is a gorgeous uh, outfit from her. So thank you very much, Lacry. And uh, without further ado, we'd love you to get some more cocktails and wine and beer, have a few nibbles, and enjoy the rest of the night mingling away as we have Seminar Lab here to spin the tunes on the deck until close. So we look forward to seeing you guys next time that couldn't make it this time. Have a wonderful Christmas and a happy new year. Thank you to all of you, the 3016 Business Club.